Right. <laughs> okay, so we are beginning, and um, welcome everybody who is on Skype. Um, let's see, I will just, um, did y'all get kind of an update on Carson? You did? And did they just kind of tell you how things went? Okay. <clears throat> Well, I mean, uh, I was there, and, and um, well, it took forever to get there because I had to get up at 6 just to, just to try to get there on time, and still uh, I get there, and then they tell me, well, you have to wait in the waiting room just to go back in that section. <clears throat> so I waited till 8 o'clock, and I think I got there around 7-something. Um, and finally went in, and he was, um, um, we got to tease a lot. Um, I, there was a nurse checking him out, one of the nurses that was going to be working it on him and stuff like that, and of course the whole family's in this little room with him and the nurse, and the, so I said, um, I said, um, um, uh, Carson, there's going to be somebody very famous uh, that's going to come visit you. It's a, it's a general. And he said, really? I said, yeah, general anesthesia. <laughs> 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 and, and you'll like him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so one of, uh, one of the nurses, like I said, was there. And she was kind of this little cute girl. And I said, um, I said, um, you see that girl over there? She's going to be working on you now. And I said, uh, um, you know, she's kind of cute, so you got to watch out. Don't let her get into your head. <laughs> so I was doing stuff like that the whole time, the whole seven hours, and. Um, and uh, when I got ready to go, uh, Jeff said, thank you for being the way you are. He said, because this could have been a real tense situation. He said, we all enjoyed it. And, and they, were, they were blessed. It was blessing Carson because he's, he and I get along real well. And he loves my jokes. And he's, he's funny, too. I, I, I even got a picture of him sitting down. And he's about to lay down and um, be wheeled out. Um, and... Um, and I've got him sitting there holding a, I don't know where we got this sign, but it just says clean on it. It's a fluorescent green with black letters, clean. And he's smiling real big. And this is just before his surgery. You know, it's a great, it's a great picture. <coughs> so it was good. And then my reward for being a good boy was, <laughs> and from, from the camera, I'm sure you cannot tell that this is, uh, it's a, uh, it's a bison stomach. <laughs> Actually, it's a pineapple <laughs> stomach. <laughs> All right, we need to we need to go here. All right, so uh, the class supreme supreme being, and um, when you look at that name, <clears throat> you think. I mean, it's almost the starting point where even unsaved people will call him the supreme being, you know, uh, or the man upstairs or something, which I love because <clears throat> I'm upstairs most of the time in my house, and, but, uh, but I'm not the supreme being. Anyway, they, that's a term that they use, and it's sort of the introductory term to God. That's the way people look at it. Um, however, what we're looking at first is the being part of this, <clears throat> and as such, um, it's really, if, if you really understand everything, it really is sort of the end all of who God is, because it's not, has nothing to do with what he's done, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, all the trappings that we think, any of his characteristics in the sense of, 
it's, he's not a characteristic, and he's not a bunch of characteristics, and he's not defined by his characteristics. His characteristics are defined by him and who he is. But to know him, to really know him, you have to know, his, know him in being, and that's, that's way, way down the road. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I've often, you know, told you all that, you know, we set this up as a three-year Bible school, and we did that with purpose because the disciples were three, actually three and a half years with Jesus. And in that time, there was a progression that took place and uh, that bled over into once Jesus was gone or once they were out of Bible school with Jesus, <laughs> right? The Spirit of God began to take over. And... Um, so, uh, and also with Paul, and uh, I, I pulled up the, let's see, yeah, I pulled up the scripture here, it's, uh, you know it, Galatians 1.17, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. And um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> Uh, here we see Paul um, going out into Arabia and goes to Damascus, and there he is, um, he's seeking the Lord, you know, he's seeking the Lord. He doesn't really, in a sense, know the Lord at that point. He knows all of the doctrines of uh, the Jews, he knows all the teachings of God, but um, he doesn't know the being of that Lord, and uh, he still thinks in terms of supreme. Um, and so the, uh, so the Lord, I'm sure, led him on a journey. And again, it's a, it's a journey. It's a journey of of finding him out. And like I said, the, the early part is um, he's the supreme being, but that's nothing. That tells us nothing about him, really, other than maybe he's got power. You know what I'm saying? But once you get into the being aspect, but that, that took place with Paul a long time, and you get that in his letters. You get the, when you know that these letters were early on, and these were sort of in the middle of his ministry, and these were around the time of his death, you see a, a, a progression of, of grasping the Lord. And, and that progression, I, I really like it in looking at Paul. Well, I like it in looking at the disciples, too. <clears throat> but I really like it with Paul. Because you're really hearing what he's seeing of the Lord. And he's, as he's going on, it's like somebody that's traveling along a road and he's picking up new things as he goes. And he's walking, walking with those. And then he'll pick up something else that adds to and builds upon him knowing the Lord. And isn't that what we're doing? <laughs> we're, we're walking on this journey and we're going... And we're adding to as the Lord gives it to us. And, and um, you, know, I, you know, I remember, you know, in my journey, it's not so much now, but I remember early on and sort of in the middle that the Lord would share something with me. And you remember, y'all remember that I've used the example of like a 5,000-piece puzzle? Y'all remember me doing that? And when you get it all together, there's this big picture of Jesus, you know. <laughs> now I know Jesus. But... Um, but I remember getting pieces and go, where does this fit? I mean, really, you know. Yeah. Do you want to? I don't remember exactly. Okay. Well, both of these are things that uh, Deb shared with me after the last class here. And uh, one of them was a, a an example, I think I learned it when I was in high school. I think it was one of the, in the literature class or something like that. And I don't remember the exact story, but I can give you my recollection, which is probably really off, but it still is close to the theme of what the story was about. And it was called something like the five blind men and the elephant. Anybody remember that from, you know, five men and a, uh, five blind men and an elephant. And so one of them walks up. And, and uh, 
he grabs hold of the elephant's leg and he says, the elephant is like a tree, like a tree trunk. The elephant is like a tree. Remember, these guys are all blind. And one of them walks up to the rear and he grabs the tail and says, the elephant is like a rope, you know. And another one goes over and grabs the ear and says, the elephant is like a elephant ear. <laughs> What's the name of those plants? <laughs> elephant ears, I think. But a big leaf plant, you know, and um, on and on. And so the moral of the story was that until we fully see, we're going to grab the Lord, and we're going to say, the Lord is like this, and the Lord is, someone else will grab him and say, no, 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 the Lord is like this. And, and I think that's partially where denominations come from. I think they've grabbed part, and they, they've made that the whole. And, <clears throat> and if you can imagine those three, those blind men, they would... Um, if they actually, if that actually was a situation, and they left and went home, they would spread the news of what the elephant was like, and it'd be all, it'd be five different examples. Um, but none of them would actually be the elephant. And uh, and what was the scripture? Oh, it was in Ephesians, wasn't it? Do you have it or? <coughs> um, let's see. It was, gosh. Oh, yeah. So Deb shared both of these in the car after last class. And she reminded me of the scripture in Ephesians that says that we would know the truth as it is in Jesus, like in his being. Not just the truth as it is in Christ. Because even that, to some degree, in my opinion, gets perverted if we don't understand the Christ in whom we are instead of some truth that I'm in Christ. There's a Ephesians 4:21. What's do you want to read it while I take a little sip? What did you say I was too busy drinking? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Oh, you got it? Go. If so be that you have heard him. If so be that you have heard him. And have been taught by him. And have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus. As the truth is in him. So what is that saying? He's not saying Jesus has given us the truth. You've heard him. You've been taught by him. It's not saying Jesus has given us, giving us the truth. He's saying, as the truth is in him, and that's where it's coming from, the teaching and the thing like that. And that's why being is so important. But again, his being, you're not going to know that for a while. I mean, it, right? Amen. I mean, even, okay, take me for an example. If, you, um, if you're here for a couple of years, you could say, well, I really know Rand. Um, because I'm so one-dimensional. <clears throat> or you would have to see me under a lot of different situations. I mean, some of you some of you probably don't know that I have a real quiet side. Some of you would probably laugh for me to say that. Do I? Yes. A major quiet side. You know. And um, uh, I would say... I would say the vast majority of most of my days, I'm real quiet because I'm upstairs with the Lord in the Word, and uh, and it's it's my time with Him. But I can be outrageous. I mean, I can be just wild. And uh, so there's, you know, uh, all of that you can see and say, well, I know Randy. Do you really know my being? And I think that's true of all of us. I think it's true of all of us. So anyway, um, and then I wanted to use, I wanted to read the example uh, 
with the three years in relationship to Paul and a thing that um, happened with him. This is Acts 19.1, and he says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. Here we go, Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he went on in unto the, the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. And when diverse, when different ones were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them, separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus, and, and this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Okay, so it's two years, but he had been there three months before, and uh, it's kind of, um, the rest of it was made up by Jesus, because he was three and a half years with his disciples carry the three and put that <laughs> I'm not good at math so stop um, what I love about this is um, he continued two years more beyond what he'd done <clears throat> which is getting close to the end of that time period getting close to the end of the three year period if you will and it says and he separated the disciples disputing daily in the school. So he's teaching there. And then this continued by the space of two years so that they, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus. Asia, all they of Asia. Are there many people in Asia? I mean, 15, 20, I don't know. Let me try this side. A fresh flow from this straw. And I'm really blessed with this right here. That's it. <clears throat> okay. Um, uh, so this, uh, this progression towards the being of God this progression. I mean, if we don't know where we're going, are we really making a progression? I mean, I mean, there is some question on that. Because it, it, Israel in the wilderness for 40 years could have felt like they were making a progression and they were just covering the same ground over and over for 40 years. You know. So, but when it's, you're going somewhere, then the Spirit of God is able to bring us along because it's really his journey, as it were. You know, you remember uh, Eliezer taking uh, the bride to Isaac? You know, the servant Eliezer representing the Holy Spirit. It was just as much his journey as it was hers. Amen? So it's a Spirit's journey, and it's the Spirit's journey who is trying to uh, get us in tune with him only for one reason so that we can be more than in tune with Jesus, so that we can be one with that being. But there's even the process of, you know, getting familiar with the Holy Spirit and what he's saying about the Lord before, because it's one thing. Okay, so let's picture the journey. He goes down to Haran. He finds Rebecca. He, Rebecca, is that who it was? Rachel? Rebecca. Finds Rebecca. So they're making this journey back to where Abraham is and where Isaac is, and he's, she doesn't know him. It's, a, it's like the journey we're making with the Holy Spirit. She doesn't know him, but the Holy Spirit is giving input, and I'm sure she's asking questions. Is it good to ask questions? Yeah. So what's he like, you know? What, what does he like? Not just what's he like, what's he what the things does he like? What is this and that? She's asking all these questions, and she's getting it all straight from the Holy Spirit, right? So when she gets to the tent but doesn't go in where he's at, does she know him? No, she doesn't. She hasn't even met him. But she goes in, and there he is. And so the process of being starts. 
All right. So, you know, we're, we're so eager, aren't we? We're so eager to, I gotta, I gotta make some progress here, you know? And that's what we do. We run into many microphones along the way. <laughs> smash our noses on them. Um, uh, so I was, uh, okay, so who was I talking to about this? Um, some of you probably, you guys wouldn't, but I don't, I don't know how much y'all went have gone through somewhat of this progression, Lindsay and Caitlin, but I don't know that it ever was really explained to y'all. But the Bible school was first about learning the Bible, learning the Bible, just the scriptures, learning the Bible. Because most Christians don't know much about the Bible, amen? Learn the Bible, and then learn the themes of what the Bible has to say, even dealing with like simple things like righteousness or all that. Y'all remember? We went through all of that, and that was, that was important because we were doing that, particularly in the first year. We were saying, this is what you need to do. Learn the Bible, you know, and, uh, and I, I know that to some degree you guys have done that because I hear you quoting the scriptures all the time just off the cuff when, when I'm talking with you. Um, and, um, but that's like, okay, well, that, you don't learn the Bible overnight. You know, even if you read the Bible, you don't know the Bible. You know, someone could say and probably has said to me, well, well <clears throat> you know, I know the Bible. And I said, so have you read the Bible through? And they'd say, yeah, yeah, I read it through. And I'd say, so what's Habakkuk about? <laughs> you know, or, you know, whatever. What is, the, what is the main theme of the book of Titus? You know. You know, I, you can do that about five times and then go, shall we continue? And they'll go, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the, that's, that was, are those things important? You tell me. Now, they're important. We've got to know the, the word of God. We've got to know the scriptures. And, and uh, so, and for me, a whole bunch of my own, I was in Bible school, but a whole bunch of my own personal study was going on when I, at whatever small amounts of free time we had, that's where I was. And, um, and y'all, some of y'all have heard this, y'all probably haven't, but when I was in Bible school, we had a cafeteria and we go in the cafeteria. And of course I had, I had my regular Bible for classrooms, but when I was just somewhere like that, I would have my, my, not my, we call this my sword, you know, sword of the spirit. This was my sword, which is the word of God, Ephesians five, right? <laughs> And then I would carry a little Bible in my pocket, and, and I called it my dagger. And I would sit there in the cafeteria, and wouldn't I do this? I would read and everything else. And, of course, you can't sit around other Bible school students. What are you reading? You know, or, or, or share with us what you're getting or something like that. And, of course, I would say, I'm not getting much because you're talking to me. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> anyway uh, so... <laughs> So um, those, you know, and going along with the theme, the basic themes of the Bible, but also, if nothing else, the terminology, y'all remember that, that we said terminology, this is our terminology. Someone else can have different terminology and be saying the same thing. You know that? Totally different. Because, you know, it didn't, I didn't learn that overnight. That took me a while, and I remember I was somewhere and someone was sharing, and I think it was a face-to-face -face deal, and they were sharing with me, and I was going, you know, what? I mean, I was kind of having a hard time following. And then, I think, the, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think the Holy Spirit said, just listen. And I started listening to him, and I went, they're saying what we're saying, but their terminology is different. See? But, you know, I mean, before I really listened and did that, and that was, a, that was not just an event. I'm telling you of an event, but it changed something in me that said, you need to listen to people and not just say, well, they have to say it the way I do, you know, right? You know, 
And so you learn to listen and you go, okay, they're saying, I see, they're just using different terms or something like that. And um, which is good to know because I guess I was thinking that we are the only ones who really know this, which we're not, and shame on me. But at that time I was young and stupid, <laughs> right? All right, so um, uh, that uh, was the first year. The second year is that's when you dig in deeper to the revelation of Christ. That's when you go, okay, this is it. This is what I'm here for. i got to know the Lord. But you all remember that I said that first year, I said, just know the Bible. That was my main thing. Just know the Bible. If you know the Bible and you're filled with the Spirit, don't worry. You know, you'll be able to dig in. You know, and the Lord will lead you in that. So the second year was, okay, now the, this, here's what we're going to really be pressing on. And then the third year was um, a combination of continuing to see him, but to put it into action. And so we would do outreaches, Mexico, Costa Rica, all these, all these different places, and take a bunch. We would have a bunch of us to go. And... Um, uh, and what was the purpose of that? Of course, we would have outreaches locally, even Fry Street and all kind of stuff. And the purpose of that was so that we could live it. You know what I mean? So that we could put it into action, so that we could live it and we could see. Because, um, you know, a, a regular Bible school, if there's a regular Bible school and it's three years, you literally sit there for three years. There is no... Let's go do this. Let's, let's, you know, be put in situations that we can either see we're there or we're not there. Is that right? Yeah. You know, because we need to know that. We need, yeah. we need the law of contrast. Yeah. And, it, and, and sometimes it's like we're there in this area, but we're not over here. And I think that's part of the journey. Yeah. I think that, that it's not like it all just comes and woohoo, right? It's like we began to see him. You know, anybody remember a book I wrote called something about the revelation of Christ? What's it called? It's the first book I wrote. Any, the revelation of Christ, the true gospel. And I made a statement in there that revelation uh, begins but never ends. You don't come to a revelation of Christ in that sense. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I think there's an initial, and I think I said this in that book, there's an initial beginning of the revelation of Christ, but once that begins, it begins, but it never ends. There, how can the ancient of days, how come him who was, was and is and is to come be, you know, fully understood at one initial, which is real and true? But it's, you know, you got to keep going, and the Lord, the Lord's, behind that so if we're mindful of these things if we're mindful of the of the journey then we've got somebody we've got you know we're not just going to a tent somewhere that Isaac is amen somewhere you know we've got a guide with us yeah. and he's helping us thank God because you know I mean, y'all have heard of some of the stories and some of the things I've done or said when I was in Bible school, and Lord, have mercy. And, and, and when I graduated, Deb and I had agreed when we, when I, we graduated that um, we would get married. And then the elders came to us when they heard that information and said, well, when y'all get married, can we send you as missionaries to Jamaica? I was telling somebody this part of this story recently. Oh, I think it was Jeff, because we had a lot of time together, <laughs> hours and hours. Anyway, um, that, um, <clears throat> that we went to Jamaica and got there, and we're newlyweds and right out of Bible school. And they take us down to the local church building, and there hadn't been a pastor there in years, but they were still having services, but no pastor. And uh, the leader uh, that was there, because there were several people, there were a group of eight or ten people that were there when we arrived. So we were the newbies in there. And he said, well, you're going to pastor this church. And I said, you know, 
okay. I'm a Bible school student. I don't know anything, you know. And so, so then he took me up into the, the hills there where there was a little church that was made of just poles and a zinc roof over it with no walls, just poles and, and poles in the ground and a board to sit on spread over those poles. And, and he said, you're going to pastor this church too. And then he took me to uh, what? The poor farm, which is where they dump the people who are dying. And, uh, and uh, you go in there and there's the smell of, of blood and death and urine and just, it's just bad. And they're all, I mean, they are on their way out. <clears throat> we walk in the door and Deb couldn't stand the smell and gagged and went out and threw up and said, I can't go in there. And I said, you don't have to. So every week I would go there and get the opportunity. I knew these people are going to be dropping into hell within the week, many of them, and there'll be a new load. So I got to stand up there and share with them and then go to anyone who's asked, you know, ask for prayer and lead them to the Lord. <coughs> Okay, so then, uh, and he said, you'll be coming here every week. And then went up to uh, Brompton, uh, no, prison, the pr uh, hilltop, hilltop. hilltop prison with the prisoners. And he said, you'll be preaching here <laughs> on a regular basis. And I'm going, you know, actually, I think my thought was, <clears throat> praise God that I studied. That was what I thought. I thought, praise God that I really, really got, because I really did get after it. I mean, I did. I could tell you those stories, but man, I was going after the Lord. Well, about three months and I was done. You know, because all my sermons, <laughs> everything that I thought I could preach, because I thought, this will last years. I mean, I've had nothing but time with the Lord for three years, and I've utilized it, unlike the group that's on this side. I really... Just kidding. <clears throat> but I, I utilized it. That's all the grain in the storage. <laughs> That's all the grain in storage. Perfect. But, but my storage, when you're doing that much ministering, plus we had a Bible school, and I, I was the main speaker for the Bible school. <clears throat> anyway, let's stop because they're not going to believe it can be actually that much, but it was. And... Um, so it was just gone. Maybe, you know, maybe that would have lasted a long time if I only preached once a week in a church on Sunday morning or something. But the demand was there right then. It was the perfect thing for me. I ran out. And I, and I had to change the way I was approaching. I had to change and say, Lord, this can't be about gathering Okay, I've got a sermon now from here, or something good from here, and I've got something good from here. I need this so in me that it flows like rivers of living water. Okay. <clears throat> well, before I give you the answer to that, thank you, Debbie. Oh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies. I also got this from my wife. <coughs> and this gun, she got. Um, <coughs> that's a joke up there. Oh, you're here. I keep looking up there. <coughs> um, so... Um, So I was thinking about um, the progression to the being of God. The, the, again, the very beginning, he's the supreme being. But to have that being, because I didn't fully get that flow, even though after three years of Bible school and several years as a missionary pouring out, I, I needed to be moving continually toward the being of God and understanding where I was going. Does that make sense? 
not just going, okay, I just want to see Jesus today, right? Um, so anyway, um, I started thinking about the progression in relationship to the disciples. So, um, and I was on a little search um, recently that kind of got me off on this, uh, which I won't go into that search, but um, how Jesus came, um, and, and well, I'll give you one example. I won't share from it right now, but how Jesus uh, Jesus came to um, Matthew, and he was a tax collector, right? And so Jesus says, "Come and follow me," and so he follows him, and and so so the tax collector understands that not by having an event and meeting Jesus, but follow him. But, you know, he has this big party. And it's all the tax collectors, and Jesus is there, you know. And I won't go into the trouble, because the Pharisees were there, too, and they started trouble. <clears throat> but it was reminding me of you know, uh, coming up to Peter when he's fishing and stuff, and you know, and then, you know, or, and different ones um, of the disciples, and then starting out, and they're going, you know, they're, they're flowing with the Lord, as it were, and they're going everywhere, and they're hearing all of his teachings, and they're watching him, and they're seeing what he does, and they're, they're seeing the miracles, and they're seeing the compassion, and they're seeing all this stuff with Jesus, and um, so, uh, so along the way, you have stuff like this. Um, at the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Okay, well, the, the example that most of us are familiar with is when James and John came to Jesus and said, uh, and brought their mom. Yeah. And, and said, Mom, you ask him. You know. And so mom says, Jesus... Could you put, you know, James on one side and John on the other side when you sit down in your kingdom, you know? And, and Jesus is just, you know, I mean, what is he thinking? I mean, that's two of the three that were the ones that, you know, Jesus always pulled aside with him. And, you know. And so uh, this one's in Luke 9, and I'll just read this one too. And sent messengers before his face, before Jesus' face, and they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And the Samaritans did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Elijah did? Okay, is anybody getting a feeling that these guys have got a way to go? Hmm? And maybe they didn't fully understand the journey at that point. Okay. And one more, since we knocked off uh, on that first one, uh, James and John, let's throw Peter in the mix then with them. And now Peter sat without in the palace, and a damsel came up to him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Galilee. And he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that were there, This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayeth thee, meaning you sound like somebody from Galilee. Then began Peter to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man, and immediately the cock crew, crowed. All right. So what does that say? This is just before the cross. Okay, this is after three years of Bible school with Jesus. Now, now tell me, which Bible school would you prefer? Three years walking with Jesus or three years with me? I, I'm not getting an answer, but anyway. Well, let me put it to you like this. 
They didn't look like they got much with Jesus' Bible school either. <laughs> Let's be honest. Did they? They didn't. I mean, here Peter's swearing and cussing. <laughs> All this kind of stuff. And <clears throat> what happens is not that long after this, they're hiding in the upper room, right? I mean, it's locked. And Jesus appears to them, and then eventually the Holy Spirit falls. And then all these thousands of people get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Peter starts preaching Christ. And, and then Peter becomes one of the top apostles in Jerusalem. And then he goes to Antioch, where Paul had been, and starts separating from, from the Gentiles. And Peter has to rebuke him. I mean, and Paul has to rebuke him, rebuke Peter. What am I saying? It's a progression, and we're heading toward his being. You know, I mean, you could, you know, you could actually even do this. <clears throat> because if you know his being, you know his heart. If you know his heart, you know his being. You, you understand, and this is, so this is, this is where we want to go with this. This is meant to um, bring us to a place where we're not digging around just in scriptures, we're looking at the eternal word. Right? But more than that, we have that inside of us. We have it inside of us and we know it. You see, most of us don't know what we have inside of us. I mean, we, we, call, him, we call it Jesus. Okay. Was he always called Jesus? Okay, then, you know, and we say, well, Jesus is the only name given under heaven whereby men might be saved. Well, that's kind of tough because the Jews, when he was born, called him Yeshua. That's Jewish for Jesus, Yeshua. And you go, okay, and then, you know, the, somebody else calls him another language, another name and everything. And we go, well, but Jesus is the, you know, okay. How about you know the person of the name? You know, you know the person of the name. You know his being. Well, as we've said, well, it's a progression because I've got new birth, filled with the Spirit, learn the Bible, learn first principles, and then revelation begins to kick in and we begin to know we understand the body of Christ which most people think the body of Christ is first and foremost a group of people gathered together a group of Christians gathered together in a building you know this is the body of Christ well you know you can't know the body of Christ until you know the Christ of the body and you can't know that until you know that in relationship to the new man. Is this right or wrong? The new man. It has to be revealed. And the Spirit of God wants to open our eyes to that. And, um, in, you know, in Christ. Well, glory to God, we got a bunch of classes this semester on being in Christ. And that's good. Because I think that's one of the first ones that we really need to know on the progression to really get down the road. I mean, we know we need to know the first principles. We need to know the body of Christ. We need to know what I've said up to this point. But I think that, that the Lord has ordained that so many are sharing on the Christ that we are in. Because it's the first real introductions to the being. It's not the, it's not the full measure. But it's the first real introduction, at least, of giving us an awareness that um, 
There is not a magical reality called in Christ. There's only a beautiful Christ in whom we are one, or put it this way, in whom we are in union with. And to know him is to know what we are in union with him. If you know a vine, you'll know what you are as a branch. Right? I mean, doesn't that make perfect sense? And, and, and you don't even have to know, as a branch, if you're grafted in, you don't have to know, uh, well, let's see, his, his vine life is going to come into me and do what? You know, well, it's going to bring forth fruit. Okay, well, I'll try. No, no, you don't understand. You're in union with someone else. No, well, I will. I'll try real hard. I'll grunt and go, Ugh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> no, you're not. 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 No, no, you're not. No, no, no. Even that, see that drinking container there? No, you're not. <laughs> Only by his life. Only by the flow. What flow? I got to get the flow going. You know, that's what we th that's what we think. I got to get the flow going. Well, I believe that we can do things to help prime the pump. That's that's why I keep drinking from this. Excelente. Prime the <laughs> prime the pump by reading the word, but. Just being a Pharisee, reading the scriptures will not get it. It's not priming anything except for your religious mindset. No. You, if, if you really understand that, you'll never go approach the Bible the same again. You hear me? Um, one of the things I've quoted many times here is uh, Paul saying to Timothy, he says, give attention to reading. And I remember when the Holy Spirit just brought that out of the scriptures. Because, you know, you're just reading along and, you're, and I'm giving attention to reading. And then he goes, give attention to reading. And I go, I look at it. And I went, well, that's funny. Because we, we go to the Bible and we go, you know, I got I to gotta see something. Oh, good. Here's, I hope that's a check. But it's not. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see something. You know, has any of y'all that's been around for a while ever gone? I gotta see something. Nothing there. Yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> you're like, you're like a pin, uh, a, a chicken pecking around trying to. You know, well, maybe it's over here. You know, and it's pitiful. We're, we're, we're pretty pitiful. How about? How about thinking of it like this? Just read the darn book sometime. Just read. Don't think I got to get something. Just give attention to reading. I mean, didn't we say that the first year that that's what you do? You want to learn the Bible. You want to learn the scriptures. How do you learn the scriptures? By sitting in enough classes. No. My Lord, no. If you don't give attention to reading, so you just read and you're going, uh, and you read, and when you get done, you don't you you think, well, I did I did it. You don't go, I got nothing. You you can't approach it that way. You can't. You have to just read. You have to just stay with his his program. Just just flow with it. And so you read, and and then one day something that you've read, which still happens to me. Something that you've read so many times you can't even give the number. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God just makes it. Durr, you go, oh, my Lord, what was I thinking when I read that? My mind is so messed up. That is wrong, buddy. But, you know, if you're, if you're together enough, you'll go, you know, the whole Bible's probably like this one scripture I just saw. It's different than what I'm perceiving it. But how are you going to even know that unless you just read it first? You know, we read it. This, this Bible's got lots of good notes down here and scripture references and, 
Um, we can read all of that stuff, and that's fine, but for the most part, you're going to come up with somebody's idea of what Jesus is. But if you just read the word, just read it. What's going to happen? The Spirit of God, the guide that wants to get you to Jesus, to the being, you know, inside of that tent. Is him you know and what if she I mean the good thing was she descended from the camel right because riding on a camel is is tough going okay it is you ever seen him I go I mean it's tough going so the Holy Spirit's trying to talk to her and she's like what <laughs> you know and uh, and and uh, so, when, but when she gets there, she descends from the camel and heads for the tent. Okay, it's a change up. You see that? It's a change up in the journey. Okay, it's going to be different now. But if she if she if he'd have said, "Well, we're here," and she would say, "Well, I figured we were. I really got a lot of good lessons out of this, and I'm ready. Ready for what? Well, I've got him." I got him. And he'd go, stop that. <laughs> stop doing that. You, all that, you know, patting the book and acting like you're spiritual, you don't, he's over there. Oh, I thought he was here. Well, he's, he is revealed in here, but he's supposed to be, by the Spirit, revealed in the Word of God in you. The being. The being, the being. So that, that was a long journey. It was a hard journey. There were good times and bad times. I'm sure that they had oases between the place that she lived and where Abraham lived. Uh, I guess he was in Hebron at that time. I think he was, and if he was, I mean, yeah, I think he was, and if he was, then, well, I'd have to look at it. But anyway, so the, the, the point is, if we're gonna know the Lord, we have, to, we have to read the word, we have to get with the Holy Spirit, we have to, uh, trust the guidance because he was a guide for her. She didn't know the way. They, were, they didn't have any maps back then, right? No maps, no way to, to figure it out. Well, you know, just do this, just take a lift. You know, they didn't have, you know, Google Arabs or any of that kind of stuff, you know. They just had, they just, in this case, they just had Eliezer. They just had the guide. And so what if the whole time she's trying to figure out the journey? Whoa. Did we just take a left back there? You know, can you hear her saying that? Did we just take a left? He goes, why? Well, I'm just trying to remember the journey. He, he could, the Holy Spirit could say something like this. You're not going to be going this way anymore. You know, it's going to be all new once you descend from that camel. So, you know, just listen to me, you know, and, 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 and I believe that in a sense also listening to Eliezer is like not just listening to him, but reading the word and the spirit of God showing you the way, but ultimately the way becomes Christ. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Anyway. I guess it's time to quit. You're not sharing after this one. But okay, what? We st I started late? Well, all I know is the Spirit of God pulled up on those camel reins, and we're going to stop right here at this little place till we start the journey again. Anyway, so you all understand, right? I mean, this thing, I can talk about the being of God and will be for a while. I can talk about it. But your goal should not be 
just to quote unquote listen to Randy. Your goal should be, Lord, keep keep me on the path, and He will. But I mean, the greater prayer would be, Lord, keep me on, headed toward Jesus until I understand Him from the inside out instead of from the outside in. Jesus of Nazareth version, outside in, from the inside out. And the Spirit of God is faithful to Jesus. He is faithful. Right? So, let me, before I pray, let me see if there's another well here, another oasis. Hmm? I just found another oasis. Let's pray. Father, we want to know your being. We want to know who you really are from the inside out. We want to know you as you are. And Father, in the word of God, it says that we will know as we are known. And, and, uh, and we are known by you, by oneness with your son. That's how we're known by you. You, you believe in the cross. You, well, you know it. And you know what happened, and you believe in oneness because you know what happened. And you believe in us being vessels of your life because you know what happened. Father, thank you for those who will be carrying the life of what it means to be in Christ because that is what is settled and what is true and cannot be reversed and will always be true. And there we can rest as, as you take us even further, take us even further eventually into your, the, the fullness of your being. But every step we make after that, we know that we're one, one with you already. We're just learning it, we're just finding out. And you eventually begin to move into making it real in every step and every word. But Father, may we first understand as these teachers will become that we are complete in him who is the head. So Father, we plug in, plug into your word until we can plug into your fullness. We thank you. Jesus' name. Amen.